Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. Today we're going to be making a pattern called Peaking Points. This is a pattern from Cozy Quilt Designs and it's very interesting because take a look at the blocks. They're kind of skewed and that's because the center is cut in a different shape, not a rectangle. Now as a result of that, we get these nice stars as accents. So I'm really excited to get this stitched up. Now, this is a jelly roll pattern. So I'm gonna use this nice bright one from Moda. It's called Sunny Day Batiks and it's got lots of pretty colors in it. So there's multiple sizes included in the pattern. I'm going to make the throw size. So I'm gonna need 32 strips, a third of a yard of an accent, and then some border fabrics, but we'll worry about those once the patchwork is done. So because the pattern only needs 32 strips, and I've got 40 here, I'm gonna take some of them out. And I think I would like to stick with the turquoise purple blue palette more. So I'm gonna take out some of these yellow ones. They're beautiful, but I think the quilt will look better this time with just these colors. So what I've done here is separated the strips into two stacks. There's the same amount in each one and I just didn't worry about what color goes where. It's just a nice blend in each stack. And the reason they're separated is because these all get subcut to one measurement, these get subcut to another measurement. Now, when we cut them, we are going to need to open up each strip before we cut. So I would highly recommend that you iron them flat first. If you don't iron them flat, it's hard to get that cut right in the middle where the fold is. But this way, you can get a nice, accurate cut. There, that's the last strip. They're all ironed nice and flat, and I'm ready to subcut. Now, I can't give you all the sizes because it's not my pattern, but Cozy Quilt's patterns are very easy to follow. The subcuts are all done, but before we move on, the very last group on the diagram from the pattern, these have to be cut to an odd shape. Now the pattern comes with a template, so I just cut that template out and I'm going to set this on top of my piece. It's exactly the right length, but we need to cut off that extra there. So the easiest way for me to do that is to put my ruler right on top of it and just cut away that excess. So I'm gonna do that with all of this first piece here. Okay, from our two halves of Jelly Roll strips, we're going to be working with the bottom group here, the group that we got these from. And we're going to take one of these, which is a center square, and then we're going to pick a contrasting color here. So let's try this one. And we're going to take the pieces that we cut here, all of them except for the very last piece. So I've got four pieces and I'm leaving these for later. Before we proceed, I need to give you a big disclaimer about strips with pinked edges. They vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. So these here, if you look here, here is the one line here and two and a half inches. That's the two and a half inch line right there. Now I can see both lines. So the two and a half inches is from the peaks. It's measured from peak to peak. Some strips you'll get, it's measured from valley to valley. So you always want to measure so that you know where to start your quarter inch from. So our quarter inch needs to start from the peak and go in a quarter inch. Now it doesn't seem like a big deal, but if you have a block with a lot of seams and you're starting at the valley and going in a quarter inch, each piece will end up too small and that effect will magnify over all your patchwork and your blocks will end up not the right size. So always check and measure before you sew. Here is how these pieces are going to fit on. All four are going to go around the center. So first, we're going to sew these two together. They're exactly the same length, so I'm just going to stitch with a quarter inch seam here. Okay. 
and I'm going to finger press the seam allowance. All, all the seam allowances are going to go away from the center. So I'm just going to pull it open a little and then just smash it down with my fingernails or my fingertip. Now we're going to put this bottom piece on. Now it's, it's bigger than it needs to be. So we're going to line up these two edges. So I'm going to put it here, line up these edges and stitch along here. So let me pull it right over. Again, line up the bottom corners. This is extra long there. And again, press that seam allowance away from the middle. Now put it back where it came from. Now we can put this piece on. Again, we're gonna line up these edges. So put them right sides together. Take it to the machine. Line up those corners there. Finger press away. And now we can put the last piece on, but before we put it on, we need to trim off this extra length. So we do need to go back to the cutting board now. All we have to do is line up our ruler with this edge right here and just trim off the extra bits of these two pieces so we have a nice long straight edge. Now we're ready to stitch this piece onto the block and here's how we're going to do it. We're going to put them right sides together and we're going to line up the points of these two pieces here. And we're gonna let the excess float off the top there. Stitch with a quarter inch seam. Again, finger press away from the center. And now we've got extra here and extra here, so we're gonna take it back to the cutting board and get rid of those parts. So I like to line this up on my cutting lines. And so I've got the bottom of, of it along that line, and I'm just gonna trim this extra here. Now I'm gonna turn it around line up on the top edge and a straight line there. Trim off this little bit. And now we're ready to go to the next level, which is these pieces from the Jelly Roll strips that are up here. We're gonna pick a third color. So we've got orange, we've got blue. Let's use this nice burgundy. And we're gonna take all four of these pieces and head back to the machine. Here's how these pieces fit. I've got one that's going to go there, one that's going to go on the bottom, that's going to go on the top, then we'll trim it and add this piece. So it's exactly the same procedure that we used for the first time around. So this is the first seam. Now this one, again, match up the bottom corners here and leave that excess floating on the top. Add this piece, again, matching these corners. Now let's go trim it off. Now we can add this piece. So we're going to match this corner right here. And we're going to let all of the excess float off of the top here and stitch it on. We're going to trim this one also. So I'm going to line up the block on two lines here and trim off this little bit of extra right here then turn the block around this time i'm lining up the bottom and this side on a line 
and trimming off this little bit. Now we're ready to add one more single piece here. So from this bottom group, remember there were these longest pieces that we didn't use earlier. We're gonna pick one of these and we're gonna pick a color we haven't used yet. So let's get this nice dark blue. And this piece also gets the bottom corner lined up with the excess floating off of the top there. Now, I haven't ironed the block at all so far, and I'm using Batik's. They finger press nice and flat, but it is a good idea to iron it at this point. Same procedure, we're using exactly the same procedure to trim off these extra little bits. Now there's one more step on this block. We need to turn it and trim it to exactly 12 and a half inches wide. So we'll just measure over here and we're just trimming off a little teeny bit here. The block is now almost done. We just need to add one more piece to square it off here. And we're gonna do that with an accent fabric. So you see these little pieces here? That's what we need to add. Now I'm going to use a solid black and I've already gone ahead and cut it out. I think solid black will be best because we've got a lot of colors in our block and I want this to stand out just a little bit. This piece gets lined up with these corners matching here. We're just gonna stitch it on. And I'm gonna finger press again with the seam allowance away from the center. So I pressed all my seam allowances away from the center. Now all we have to do is trim our block down to 12 and a half inches. So I'm lining up the corners here and we'll trim off this bit. Now I'm going to turn it, line everything up again and cut off this edge even. And now the whole block is done. Now I don't want you to worry too much if your block comes out slightly smaller than 12 and a half. Say it comes out 12 and 3 eighths. That's okay, just trim them all to 12 and 3 eighths. Your quilt will still look great. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the rest of the blocks and I'm probably not going to make them block at a time. I'm probably going to do the center section with all of these pieces then I'm going to add these to the outside, and that way I can get a little routine going. I can sew some and trim some and iron some. Sew some more, trim more, iron more, and then we'll get all the blocks done. I've got everything done, and I'm ready to lay out the quilt. Now the layout is really, really easy. The blocks get turned so that this accent makes a star with every four blocks. So we're gonna put four together like this, so now we can see that nice dark star there, and I'm just gonna repeat that till the whole quilt is laid out. Okay, we've gone from this to this. I love how colorful it is. Now I'm going to add three borders all around it, and that's nice because it will frame it, kind of like a picture frame. So all I have to do now is stitch up the blocks, add those borders, and then I can get it onto the quilting machine. The quilt is on the machine and we need to pick some thread. Now I've got some bold colors selected here, so let's see how these look on the fabrics. I think the yellow would actually show the most. It's very bright and it's gonna show a lot on the black. The red will blend in with many of the prints. Shows a little on the black, it's not gonna show too much in there. Blue would blend in probably the best. There's the start of it. So even on the black, it hardly shows. 
purple, same thing. There's not a lot of actual purple in the quilt, but it would blend nicely. Now black, that isn't going to show at all in these black accent parts or on the black border. It's going to show a little bit here, maybe a little bit on the border, but I really want to try the black this time. I'm going to try a new pattern for the quilting. It's called triangle dance. And I like it because the triangles are on different angles there and it's still kind of abstract. So this will be interesting on the Peaking Points quilt. The quilt is all done. It's nice and cheerful, nice and bright. I really like how the blocks make it look kind of abstract because they have that odd shaped center there. I used a really bright striped batik. This is a batik that's going around the outside. And I decided this time to have the stripes going out. So I had to cut it the opposite way. I didn't cut it width of the fabric. I had to cut it the other way. But that really echoes all the colors we've got in here. These accents and the solid black, they're nice and strong. And that quilting pattern, even in black thread, does not fight with the patchwork at all. You can see all those triangles there. You can see them a little bit on the back there because I used black thread. Now this turned out 64 by 64 inches and there are five different sizes included in the pattern. This would make a great couch blanket, great wall hanging, but you could make a great big one and put it on your bed. That would look awesome as well. Thanks so much for watching our video today. We hope you enjoyed it. Now at the end of each tutorial, we always do a giveaway. And today we're gonna to give away two items. So we're gonna have two winners. This is a Christmas wall hanging. It's called O Christmas Tree. So the first one, traditional red and green Christmas fabrics. These are from Moda. It's a really fun quilt to make if you want to make one. I made two of them. It was so much fun. Now this second one, these are all Laurel Birch fabrics. A little bit brighter, a little more modern looking. So it's very easy to win. All you have to do is enter your email address and your name. And remember, these two quilts can go to winners anywhere in the world. So good luck. Now, if you like our videos and you want to support us, the best thing you can do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That really helps us out. Happy quilting.